Hello everybody, welcome to PBM Money, and I'm a little confused. Now if you've gone to my home page here, uh, and watched that video, one of the things I promised you on this channel that you won't find on the other younger channels is wisdom. So I'm going to give you some wisdom today. Now, I had this prepared a couple of weeks ago, and the original title of this video was called, It's Over. And I was going to announce that the stock market fall is done, and it's time to get back into the market. However, I went to look at a piece of real estate. Now, as you know, I've been in and out of the market for 40 years. And I like to go early in the morning because most people won't get up that early. So I met my realtor at 8.30 in the morning to go look at this duplex. Now, the numbers were good, okay? It was a good deal. It was not a great deal. It was in a good part of town. It was in the upper third of income. It was the upper third of uh, properties in this entire town. So it was, it was a quarter of a million dollar property. Which for this town is unbelievable. The average rental single family dwelling rents for 50000 The average duplex rents for about and sells for about seventy, eighty, ninety thousand. This duplex happened to rent or happened to sell for two hundred thousand dollars. Kind of upper end, brick, uh, three bedroom, two bath, blah blah blah. Decent piece of property. So I show up at eight thirty in the morning, and there's another realtor with. Uh, the client there. So we go through the property and it's it's decent. It's nothing to write home about. Um, we go through both sides. Um, and the interesting thing was as soon as we went to the first unit, the, the tenant says, um, I've been showing everybody through these now for the last three days, and it's been every 15 minutes for the last three days, solid, looking at this property. And in my mind, you know, I've been around long enough. I, I, know, I know crap what I hear, and I thought this was crap. He was a plant trying to get me to make a deal, blah, blah, blah. So we go through both properties, and I'm thinking, you know, there's a 50-50 chance I'm going to make an offer here. I'll tell you what, it took me 20 minutes to go through that property. I got outside, and there had to be 20 cars, 10 realtors, 10 clients, all waiting to get into this house. This guy was not lying. I never saw anything like it. it. It absolutely amazed me. Now, it's not like this was a super bargain. I mean, it was, it was an okay deal. But even if I had spent 200000 in cash, it would have needed a hundred, another fifty to 100000 to get it up to where I wanted long term. So, you know, we're looking a little, little bit of cash. This was on a Wednesday. They listed it on a Monday. So I asked my realtor, I said, well, what do you think? And he said, I think they're going to get an offer over 200 and there may be one or two cash offers in there. 
I said, really? So I said, well, I'm out. I, I'm not doing that. So I waited. I checked, uh, I checked Zillow two days later and hadn't sold yet. So I texted my realtor and I said, so what's going on? He said, I don't know. Let me check. So he calls me back and he says, well, they've got an offer and they're debating it right now. I guess it was a family. And they're debating it right now. Uh, anyway, and they ended up selling it. Okay, and I'm assuming they got 200000 uh for a, for a three-bedroom duplex. In a good part of town, Everybody wins in that deal. Now, let me tell you why I'm confused. Where did all that money come from? My realtor is one of the best in Springfield. I, I, get, I get into houses before they're listed or the day they're listed, within the hour. I've never seen anything like that. So where is all of this cash coming from? So that tells me that there is a lot of cash still on the side. So the fact that I was willing to make uh, the video telling you it's over, it's time to start buying, I started rethinking. So I got I got on and I started looking as a but I've told you a million times I don't look at the stock market. I look at my stocks. But I've got some students uh, who have put in the S P five hundred and their charts are all going straight up. Uh, so and I looked at, at my stocks and now for the last 60 days, it's been highly volatile, but basically no difference. Now remember, I did a video about, I don't know, three, four, five, six months ago. And I said, how are we going to know when it's over? And I said, the thing is, nobody knows. I said, but here are some of the characteristics that will help me to know when it's over. Highly erratic market, 30 to 60 days, but basically no change from start to finish. No huge jumps, no huge falls, but up and down every single day. Big swing. I said, uh, the rates will be all over the market. But what I said was, the housing market will start to break up slowly because as the economy gets better, that the loan rates are going to go up. And as the loan rates go up, the housing prices should start to fall. You see my problem. <clears throat> so I waited a week and I thought I said okay now anybody can sit back and wait and also in that video I said the, the first couple of weeks are the biggest trading days that you'll find in the recovery so you want to get in there at the right time So I don't want to wait too long and be too conservative. So now I've waited and it's been almost 90 days. If you go back on any of your charts, uh, you'll see that in the last 90 days, it's been about that. I mean, there's a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, we're there.
So I told him about it, and I said, okay, the reason I said this recession was not like any other, and this market was not like any others, is because the Fed had dumped so much cash for so many years. And all people got to do is put it in the bank and wait and pick up deals on the way up. So what were those people telling me at the real estate thing, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Are they telling me the market's about to bust and go up? Because if the market busts and go up, that tells me the market's going to take another nosedive. But the market's been down since November of last year. That's almost 12 months. So can we expect another downturn? And by downturn, I mean another 10 to 20%. I don't know the answer. Nobody knows the answer. That's why I'm confused. Now, In November, December, I mean, we're all the way through this thing, I've been giving advice on how to prepare for recovery. And that was to gather all the cash you could, repair your credit, uh, keep it right on the side, and get ready to jump when it's time to jump. I don't think this market is going to be like any other market. I think this is going to be slow and gradual. Now, is that uncommon? No, there's been markets that have taken 10 years to recover. So what do we do? So here's what I've been telling my people to do, and here's what I've done. I'm going back in the market, but I'm not going stock to stock. I still think the market is too volatile. I think there's too few players controlling uh, too many stock. Uh, but I do see a trend up, and I want to catch some of that trend on the way up. So I'm going to dollar cost average in an S&P 500. Well, in my case, it's a mutual fund. But in my student's case, it's an S&P 500 index fund. And I'm just going to have a dollar cost average every month, a couple hundred dollars. Now, that's going to do a couple of things, I think. Psychologically, in a year, they should be up overall. because And that's the fund that I want them in permanently for the rest of their lives. And so that's what I'm going to do. The individual stocks, I want to wait until I can see some positive proof that the market overall is up and recovering and on its way. I haven't seen that yet. I've seen what I described earlier, but I've also seen some things that make no sense at all to me. If you look at just what I saw at that real estate showing, and you project that for the rest of the country. That tells me there's still way too much cash out there chasing uh, this, and everybody's waiting for the bottom to hit. And then they're all going to jump in, and it's going to, and it's just going to explode up. I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't think that's true. I still think when the market breaks, interest rates on, on homes will be higher. 
the housing uh, market will loosen up a little bit. Uh, it will become a buyer's market at some point and the prices will neutralize or start to fall a little bit. I don't think they're going to bust up. So I'm confused. So my advice to you, if you're looking for any, is I would dollar cost average into an S&P 500 uh, 500 index fund and I would just put X amount of dollars in if you've got any extra money on the side or you've got any money prepared to go in I would hold it Well, you guys have a great day, a great week, and happy investing.